Welcome back to Mysterious Goings On. I'm Alex Greenwood, and it's of endings I wish to speak, good sir. No, not really. It's an ending in a way. It's the end of season five. Oh my gosh. Insert applause here. Not for me, though, but for our great guest and for you listeners who have stuck with us and been such good friends to this show since 2016. Can you dig it? Can you believe it? Sometimes I can. You know, uh, this show is just going to be a little bit of uh, housekeeping, so to speak, and I'm going to tell you a few things about what's going on with the show and how long we'll be on hiatus and all that stuff in a moment. But stick around. We're going to end on a good note with uh, this, his satanic comedic majesty himself, Euro Satan. A humorist Euro Satan will be uh, closing us out at the end of this episode. So please don't go away. Don't touch that dial, and we'll hear from our good friend Euro Satan at the end of the show. So we're talking about the end of the season. So first of all, it's been five seasons, basically, the show, although we had really kind of an aborted season four. It was only a few episodes because I was had some illness and some stuff going on. But more and more podcasts are taking the kind of the television approach to having seasons. It, I've realized that starting a different podcast, uh, links in the show notes, for PR After Hours, I started that one in January, averaging two episodes a week, Admittedly, not as long form as this show. Got 55 episodes done between January and last week here in uh, in the last week of July. A lot of interviews, a lot of stuff with just me offering tips, things like that. It's kind of similar to what this was before I really picked up the interview schedule here. And um, I got to tell you, it's it, it. I could see why they have to take breaks. You can burn out a little bit, and my curiosity never dims, but my energy and my schedule. Things just jam up because when you're booking guests for the show, a lot of them, as we've had in Brazil and Italy and Scotland and Canada, and there's just different time zones and scheduling. Japan, I forgot Japan on my other show. Um, there's just so many things that go into this, and uh, having to put that into my own work schedule, my own daily life schedule, it's it can be a little taxing. And I just need to recharge the batteries and... If you listen to this show because you read my books, one of the reasons is because I am working on finishing the first draft of the next John Pilot mystery novel. So that's part of it, too. That and work is starting to pick up here in the pandemic for my day job. So just a lot of stuff. So I'm taking uh, about a three-week hiatus just to kind of recharge the batteries, and we'll come roaring back in September. And I'll let you know dates and stuff. Please look at mgopod.com. And that will tell you updates of what's going on. I won't be posting updates here in the the feed. I'm not going to clutter up the podcast feed with a little message that's basically a commercial when we're coming back. I I mean, I might, but I want to avoid that. If if I could just ask you to please go to mgopod.com. You just go there, and then you scroll down, and you'll come to show notes. And um, there's something called updates on the show notes. You can click that category, and that's just updates about when the next show will be. And, of course, if you don't want to go looking for it, if you want to be reminded, and I don't abuse the privilege, I promise you, scroll all the way down to the bottom where it says subscribe, and you put in your email, and you hit sign up. And, by the way, get 10% off your first mystery novel purchase of my, my novels uh, when you sign up for our best podcast newsletter. And here's how you do that. Um, when you do that... If you sign up and you want to buy on MGOPod.com, you want to buy one of the um, seven John Pilot mystery novels, you just need to email me back uh, at alex at alexgpr.com and say, hey, I signed up for the newsletter. I'll double check that. And then I will get you a discount code or some other means to help you save 10% off a paperback copy of the book. This does only apply to paperbacks, by the way, not to ebooks because that's just uh, how I am. But anyway, <laughs> I hope you'll do that. And that way, it's two things. You're going to get a 10% savings on a paperback of a, what I think is a quality quality read. And you're also going to be uh, notified every time we have a new episode and I have an update or a special offer. So I hope you'll do that. Again, mgopod.com. Speaking of that, we're, since we're doing housekeeping here, folks, just a reminder that you can help keep Mysterious Goings On going on. You can become a supporter. 
It is so simple. You can go to PayPal and subscribe and for $1.99 a month, that's it, $1.99 a month, and it'll just automatically be a subscription that you will uh, come out of your PayPal account that just does, obviously doesn't pay for everything. But if enough of you pay $1.99 a month, it'll help me cover the hosting fees for the show, the website fees for MGOPod.com. Occasionally, microphones wear out, equipment needs replacing. I sometimes need to update my software that I use to edit the show, etc. It just helps defer the cost, but more than anything else, my friends, it just encourages me. And, of course, I, I can hear some people saying, don't encourage him. But I could still use some encouragement, and I know if you're listening to the show, you you probably enjoy it and look forward to it. In fact, it's funny. I was talking to a friend uh, today who said, oh, my gosh, a hiatus. What will I do? Well, there's plenty of back episodes to listen to. We're close to 100 episodes or so in here, and you can find them all on Apple Podcasts or probably pretty much wherever you get quality shows. But again, go to mgopod.com, scroll down to the Keep Mysterious Goings On Going On, become a supporter link, click on there, and you can give through your PayPal account or your debit or credit card. You can give monthly like our uh, listener Terry does, or you can give all at once. I had a listener who asked to remain anonymous who gave two years worth in one go. Not a kidding, not a joke, as, as Joe Biden says, not a joke. Two years. He said, can I just can I just PayPal you all at once? That way, it's just simpler for me. And I'm like, absolutely. And I promise the show will be on for the next two years. Two years worth. And so it was like 50 bucks, something like that. So, I mean, it was just great. Um, you can do that too. Can't do it. Can't afford it right now. Pandemic. I get it. I'm not trying to make this behind a paywall. I will never do that. I'm not looking to get on Patreon and start that and give them a big cut of what, I, what you offer me. But I just want to make sure that if you like the show and you want to encourage the show, you can do that. Now, there's another way, if you like the show, that you can help it keep going, okay? And it's pretty easy. It doesn't come to cost you any money either. Let's say you, you really can't spring any money right now, or maybe you can only do a one-time $5 or something. I appreciate that. Five bucks for season five? That's not bad. So six bucks for season six would be nice. All right. But um, here's what we're, we're going to do here is um, if you can't be a supporter – Please think about doing this. There's a big way you can support. You can still help by giving us a review. And I have the links in the show notes to this. I will link back to that. And it just tells you how you can go on Apple Podcasts, which is really the one I need the reviews on the most. Give it five stars and a sentence or two telling what you like about Mysterious Goings On. We need more reviews. Here's the thing, too. We get enough reviews. We start getting higher in the algorithm. More people listen to the show. The audience builds up. If we can hit the critical mass on, on numbers for downloads per month, then I can start getting advertising that really can support the show. You may hear some advertising at the end of the episodes. I get fractions of pennies every time those are played. Those are, those are fine, and they will eventually help a little bit, um, but... Uh, I would love it if I could get some live reads or, you know, get stuff like Quip toothbrushes or, or, or all the stuff you hear on other podcasts where they're reading about these great products. If you get into that territory, that's when you know the podcast can at least pay its bills, generally. So if you could help by writing a review, that's fantastic. And one last thing you can do, of course, if you're on social media and you're enjoying an episode, please share it on social media, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, wherever you think it's appropriate, and just say, I'm really enjoying this show because. Give it a listen on Apple Podcasts. Here's the link. Or you can link back to MGO Pod to the specific link to the show in the show notes. I know I'm asking a lot, but this is the end of the season. This is when I kind of ask. And, you know, while I'm at it, I'm going to ask you to. There's going to be a link in the show notes. It usually is. If you're interested in the John Pilot Mysteries and have not read them yet, please click the link. Go to Amazon.com. You can get all the eBooks for pennies Basically, you can get the paperbacks very cheaply. If you go through MGOPod.com, as I said previously, use your 10% off as a subscriber. I will autograph the book for you and send it to you myself. There's so many ways you could do it, but it would be uh, such a boon to me if I could sell a few more books, especially ahead of the uh, eighth John Pilot book, which is going to be coming out this year, fingers crossed. The other thing, too, is... Um, while you're there, speaking of reviews, starred reviews on all the books that you've read as a verified purchaser particularly really do help me with Amazon.com, help me find more readers. You know, if there's one thing I have learned, though, i got to tell you something. I've, I've been so wrapped up in interviewing other authors and writers this past couple of years that I know I've kind of let my work not suffer, but it's easier to put it aside. I am so fired up speaking to so many great authors this season. Uh, 
Doug Skelton from Scotland, uh, Jason McIntyre from Canada. It's virtual UN here, by the way. Uh, Adriana Gavanzoni from Brazil. Um, Alessandra Torre from the United States. In particular, Alessandra has encouraged me because she was a newbie and an, and an indie writer who, who's now a hybrid writer. She writes for traditional publishing and she self-publishes. And there was a special offer on her episode where she talked about uh, using artificial intelligence for authors to make better books. And there's a link in, to that episode in the show notes there where you can get 15% off their software, which is really inexpensive already. But I learned so much from her and all the, all the guests this, this particular season. And if it's okay with you, I want to go through some of this and just kind of walk down memory lane. And if you're, especially if you've not listened to the whole season yet, um, one, I got, speaking of Terry, who is one of our benefactors of the show, she's a big fan, I asked her, if she would just tell me some of the ones that stuck out in her mind that were her favorites this season, and I don't think she'll mind if I share them with you. And she said this in general, though. She says, I like podcasts that get me thinking as well as being entertaining. And I appreciate that, Terry. Thank you so much. And she does a great job. She reshares these things on Twitter when she listens to an episode that really speaks to her. She loved Dr. Nixon, which I totally agree with. Dr. Natalie Nixon talking about creativity. Um, she's, I agree with this comment. She said, she's so brilliant. She just blew my mind. Totally agree. Um, Alessandra Torrey, she liked her as well, as I mentioned. She's just she was intrigued by her advice on bestsellers as well as the AI piece. And she absolutely was fascinated, she said, and wants to hear more from Brian Hutton, who is our restaurant industry product designer and expert who, in, who talked about your next meal. And he talked about how restaurants are going to be affected by the pandemic. The timing of that episode was was on was on you know on point and Sadly, a lot of his predictions are coming true, but he has continued to uh, speak about this and write about this. He's toying with the idea of producing his own podcast. If he does, you know darn well I will cross over and share information about that when he does. But I will try to remember to put a link in the show notes to an essay he wrote about what he thinks that restaurants can, and everybody can do in the middle of a pandemic to uh, turn to their creative side to try to pivot and try to be more productive and try to make money and try to just make the best of the situation we find ourselves in. So, Terry, thanks for those comments. I appreciate that. And I'll just walk us down memory lane here a little bit uh, for season five. This is a pretty long season. There's over, I think, 20 episodes. But, you know, we started out with a two-parter in January, and it was Hey 19, What Caught Our Eye in 2019 with the uh, author Jason McIntyre. And we talked about uh, the things that caught our eye, the most prominent pop culture phenoms, movies, books, and more. And we, we, we sp- split that over two episodes in January. It was always great. Jason is probably our returning champion as far as appearances on the show, and he's been very busy writing, and he's got a lot of great things we're going to talk about, and I'm, of course, hoping I can snag him for season six. It wouldn't be right to not have a season with Jason not in it. I think he's been in every season, but we'll check. After that, we had a great oh interview with Gary Lipman, who's he's a playwright and an author who like one notable filmmaker, entertainingly mined a rich vein of tragic pop culture in his debut novel, Set the Controls for the Heart of Sharon Tate. Go listen to that one. It's great. He he has also worked with, uh, he's a lawyer to help people who have been wrongly uh, incarcerated. He's, he's, he's just a brilliant guy, and it's a wonderful conversation. So that's that's in January, last part of January. David uh, Gary Lipman, excuse me. After that, we, we switched gears and talked a little bit about co-working with my friend Bob Martin. He is a co-working uh, entrepreneur and marketing consultant. We discussed creative approaches to clients in the world of, uh, of, of, of the arts and sports and broadcasting. He, he has a very rich background. It's not all co-working, and you ought to listen to this one um, just to hear about his great career. Our, the audio on that one got a little tortured uh, by a bad microphone, but I think we cleaned it up and it's working pretty well, and that's a good one. So, And then we went right into another friend of mine, Mike Brown of the Brain Zooming Group, talking about creativity and the solace of cigar box guitars. Um, he, we, he talked about, about you know, creativity from the corporate setting to the mystery novel and concepts, and it was just it was just so much fun. And, of course, we explained the, the real importance of the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man, so you got to listen to that one. And then we went into another kind of an eclectic one. We went to an episode in February called An Accountant Goes to Pot. And this is, this is uh, Mike Halsey, who is a very straight-laced conservative accountant for more than 35 years, who is in Oklahoma and has taken advantage of the idea of being an accountant to the burgeoning uh, 
marijuana related businesses down there. And we got a lot of nice uh, response and downloads on that one as well. And I just think it's a good one. It's fun to listen to that. And I, I just love how even an accountant can be creative in his business model. So that's a good one. Um, then in February, late February, we had the Euro Satan, who we mentioned previously. This is his, I think, first or second appearance in total on uh, MGO. And he did a little discussion about the state of uh, politics and society, and it was a fun one. So check that out. Then we got to a monologue from yours truly, This Viral Moment. This was in March 14th, and uh, the, the log line is, the COVID-19 virus has turned the world upside down. In this episode, I detail what I was doing to stay safe, stay sane, and stay human during this crisis. Uh, old friend of the show, Zoof, my, Michael Zoofer from Rosine. He did Zoof Trek 3, The Search for a Decent Film. It's a, it's a very uh, Star Trek uh, heavy <laughs> episode. It's, it's, uh, if you're a Trekker, it's, it's of interest to you. If, it, if you're not a Trekker, maybe not so much, but uh, Mike's a good guy, and it, it was fun for he and I to at least to geek out a little bit about uh, one of our all-time favorite shows. And uh, after that, in April, it was a conversation with Scottish thriller author Douglas Skelton. I thoroughly enjoyed this. Um, he, he's a crime writer steeped in the real stories of Scotland where he once worked for the law and as a newspaper editor, similar to me. That gritty experience of life's underside is distilled in his work. And I mean, I just enjoyed speaking with him. And I could have gone on. He and I have a love for westerns as well. And I, I could have talked to him for, for, for two hours. But, but he, you know, probably was like, God, can I get this guy to stop talking? <laughs> but we've become good friends on social media. And I'm pleased to report a couple of weeks ago, his book, uh, Thunder Bay, which we discussed in this interview, went all the way to number one on the Amazon bestseller list in Canada. And it's doing great elsewhere. He's got new books coming out. The Blood is Still. Um, there's just so much going. I'm really hoping he doesn't get too big time and... and, and uh, He'll still come back on the show because we could talk to him again about his other books. I loved me, uh, meeting and uh, befriending and talking with uh, Douglas Skelton. After that, this is the one that Terry loves so much, Your Next Meal, April 19th. And this is where Brian Hutton talks to us about how will I get my next meal? I've already talked about it a little bit. This one is, by the way, one of the jockeys for top most downloaded episode of the entire series. Oh, at, that's not a monologue. The monologues, believe it or not, I don't believe it, but I've got the numbers to prove it. Uh, a couple of the monologues do better than the interviews. But all, out of all the interviews, this one is jockeying for, for position back and forth uh, with one from season uh, four, um, Mark Groves' episode. So uh, they're back and forth. Um, then there's one, uh, Burying the Lost Routine. It's, a, it's an audio essay about my backyard garden and uh, how it relates to trying to kind of regain a little control over the world during COVID. After that, speaking of the world, what the world needs now with Robert Lee Hill. This is, this is where author, minister, social advocate, and poet Robert Lee Hill, author of All You Need Is More Love, talks about his book, which is a poignant, exuberant, and vital collections of essays, poems, and letters. And uh, Bob is such um, a strong, loving person, um, but he, he kind of I like what I love about Bob is he really does explode the myth of what pastors and ministers are supposed to be. Um, he's very frank and he's very tough, and he has had an interesting life. And I really commend you to listen to Bob Hill, one of our Kansas City-based authors. He is special. After that, I did a bonus episode on June fifteenth. This was after the George Floyd uh, incident. Uh, it's not an incident; tragedy is what it was, and it's called "The Gun to Our Heads." And I will spare you the details other than to say that I too have had experiences with the police that were not 100% positive and I detail that in that audio essay and I commend that one to you it's called the gun to our heads after that we get have fun again with Brazilian writer Adriana Gavazzoni she's a corporate lawyer by day and an award-winning erotic thriller novelist by night and in our conversation she discusses why she writes how her day job informs her stories and, and, and more. And so it's the episode, June 19th, Sex and Murder with Adriana Gavazzoni. She's got a great accent. She's so fun. I love speaking with her. She's a total delight. Please listen. So we kind of go back to the creativity after that with teaching creativity to everyone with uh, Nir Bashan, whose new book just came out as of this writing. Um, and he talks about uh, his 
he talks about his uh, approach to creativity in the corporate world. He's a speaker. He's a trainer. He's a very interesting guy. I think, I think you know, it's worth a listen. I'm going to have him actually on PR After Hours as well to talk about crisis communication. But seriously, uh, it's really interesting because he talks about how everybody can be creative and his approach to that. And I think it's a great listen. After that, my gosh, uh, July 2nd, character-driven thrillers with Burt Weisborn. The character-driven thriller is the hallmark for former Hollywood producer turned author Burt Weisborn. In this conversation, he shares his take on character-driven thrillers, meeting and working with the legendary creators of Hollywood films and screenwriters. I mean, this guy, he produced movies in Hollywood like Ghost Story and Raggedy Man. I mean, this guy is so fascinating and so generous with his time, and his books will make you a little hungry because he's very good about writing about food in the context of the book. So uh, character-driven thrillers with Burt Weisbord, I do recommend that. And check out his book, uh, Danger in Plain Sight. Link's in the show notes there. Uh, okay, then we get to another one that Terry mentioned, which is Taking the Creativity Leap with Dr. Natalie Nixon. And not Dr. Nixon, it talks about innovation is crucial to competitive advantage and very survival of virtually every business. And her approach is to creativity and how she wrote this book about helping uh, businesses survive, be innovative and creative. It's a must listen. It's great. You know, uh, I'll pause for a moment talking about the season just to say that I've spoken to people who've said, you know, sometimes I look at the log line, we call it a log line, or the description of what the episode's about and think, oh, I don't know if that's for me. I don't know if that's, I want to listen to that. And then they start listening to it and they go, oh my gosh, there is something for me in here. So I assure you, even if you're listening to this going, I don't care about business or creativity in business, give it a listen. You might find that it's uh, beneficial to your own life, if I say so myself. Um, Then we did, we went to Italy on writing and juggling with Aldo Cianuto. Oh man, Aldo joined the show to talk about his first book, his approach to writing. He is so pleasant. He's so kind and funny. And I just commend you uh, to read, uh, uh, read, listen to his uh, interview and check the show notes to buy his new book. I, I think it's, I, I haven't read it yet. It's on my list. He's just wonderful. I really enjoyed him. I'd love to have him back too. Speaking of having back, after that, we followed up in the uh, third week of July with In the Lockdown with singer-songwriter, Grammy-balladed artist Mickelson. And he returned to discuss his new album, Drowning in an Inflatable Pool, which will be, by the time you listen to the well, well, I think in about a week or two, it'll be out. Um, but he played live a cut from the new album and talked about his process and what's going on with him because we initially had him on in 2017. And it's just good catching up with Scott Mickelson. So I recommend that one highly. Okay. Rounding out the season, the last, uh, the penult- penultimate episode, this being the ultimate, I guess, best-selling author Alessandra Torrey on AI for Authors. I mean, she, besides being a six-time New York Times bestseller list author, she started as a, as a uh, self-published author, and then she got her book uh, purchased by Harlequin, and she's several other books, and she's written 22 books, I believe. She, But she's also doing something incredibly generous. She helps other authors. She she gives free advice. And she's also worked with a team to develop Marla, which is artificial intelligence for authors, particularly for genre fiction. Basically, you upload your manuscript into Marlowe, and it tells you where your story beat should be, kind of helps you with some authorial ticks that might be a problem, like if you overuse a certain word or phrase. There's so much more. Listen to the episode with her. She is a delight. And there's a 15% off code given to MGO listeners um, in that interview anytime for the Marlowe AI. So I really recommend you check that out. So that's, <laughs> I'm out of breath. That is the season. And I want to tell you, I've, I find, I found doing this show since 2016 to be incredibly rewarding, but this season has been mm, extremely so and really reinforced, um, why I do it. And I'll tell you, it's exhausting. As I said previously, it's been a lot of work because you got to understand, besides finding good guests or having them find us and then going back and forth on what we want to talk about, they're scheduling them. And then you've got, I do my research. And I hope that shows during the interviews. I just don't wing it. I make sure I know something about them. And then I put my liberal arts degree to work and hopefully find connections that are in- interesting to the guests as well as the listeners. And we, we record the show. But then it's not done. Then I have to turn around and, you know, these shows really average about 45 to 55 minutes. And then I have to go through and trim out any bits and pieces that don't quite work. Ums and ahs and and all that kind of stuff. If I can find them, I I kind of zap those as much as I can. Or if maybe there's just something that was said that the the guest was like, ah, let's let's take that out. So I've got to go trim those up. And then I've got to apply 
uh, some filters to it to make it sound better and add music and upload it. And that's, I mean, it's several hours work to go from a guest showing interest or us inviting a guest all the way up to recording and then posting the show. And don't forget, when you post a show, you don't just put the audio up. You have to write show notes. And then I have to do the show notes on the uh, site where I syndicate from and then copy those and put them on the mgopod.com site and have make sure I have decent pictures. And then I get that done. And I often put links to the YouTube, which has the audio only. And by the way, if you're listening to the YouTube, the longer episodes, YouTube cuts off, I think, at about 45 minutes for, for uploading stuff for free. So a lot of times people go, oh, I didn't get the whole interview. You're missing the whole interview. No, that's all YouTube will let me do for free. And I'm not paying YouTube just to add the extra 10 minutes. That's why you should more likely get started listening to a show maybe the first 20 minutes or so on your desktop and if you're really interested just go download it on apple Podcasts, and then you'll get the whole show and you don't have to worry about it clipping off there but uh, so i have to do all that work and then of course after that there's the promoting the show on social media and making sure that the publicist and the guests and everybody involved have links so they can share it and kind of gently reminding them and goading them into posting it and sharing it and their social networks and then it's just it's just, you just start all over again and I do this, uh, like I said, I've done about 20 of these, I guess, this season, and uh, that's between January and August here, and it, it, it can get to you. That's why I'm going to take a little break, and I, and I think I deserve it, and then my other show, PR After Hours, I'm doing the same thing. I'm taking a break at the same time, and that one's two episodes a week, but it's, I limit the interviews to about 20 minutes. There's some exceptions, but I generally limit the interviews to about 20, 25 minutes, and I don't do as many interviews. I do a lot of just me getting on for 10 minutes and giving tips, uh, PR tips, marketing tips, business tips. I don't get into my personal life, that kind of thing on that show. That's just more about business. But I think it's a fun show. And the conceit of it is PR after hours, you're in the virtual lounge. It's like having a cocktail with a PR guy or a coffee with a PR guy after hours or something. And that's the vibe. And I think it's kind of fun. So it's done really well. We did 55 episodes since January. And uh, um, the downloads have been very encouraging there and we've had a sponsor most of the year uh, with them but if you're interested if you have a brand you're interested in sponsoring a show on that show just uh, check out prafterhours.com check out the show if you have and there'll be a link in the show notes and uh, give it a listen and if you uh, want to sponsor that or with an advertisement you can do that and of course you can do an advertisement here if you're a listener to mgo and you want to help out and maybe you're like eh, i don't want to donate through paypal every day, but I do have a business or I have a book that I want to blog. I want to, maybe I'll pay Alex uh, X amount to read a 15 second or 30 second live read. I'll do that. I'm happy to do that, especially for authors. If you have a new book coming out or is out or a series and it doesn't matter. And this doesn't necessarily mean I would interview you. This just means you would say, Alex, here's, here's the pertinent information. Would you do a live read? which just means like right now, I wouldn't, re- I would in the course of the interview or the course of a show, just stop the show or at the end of the show or the beginning of the show and say, hey, this show is brought to you in part by uh, Jane Smith, author of the Wiley Fox thriller series. You can available on Amazon, blah, blah, blah. You know, I would make it, of course, sound better than that because I was just making that up. But if you are an author or a publisher or a publicist or a small press interested in doing in me doing live reads or even I can get fancy for a little bit more money and record some stuff I can do that as well just get a hold of me through mgopod.com all right okay I'm going to tell you what we're going to do here we're going to get to a special interview with our good friend Euro Satan I hope you enjoy it and I'll be back at the end just to uh, tidy things up The devil's in the details for political pundit Eurosatan, a misunderstood deity, political pundit, and aspiring comedy writer. On the show, he offers his demonically piquant takes on current events, the president, and much more. Welcome back to the show, Eurosatan. Thank you very much, Alex. It is, as always, great to be here. It's great to have you here. I've missed your voice. This week, I thought we'd do something fun, this this episode here. We haven't heard from you in a while. And since you were on, I believe, in February, we've gotten a lot of uh, listener questions come in over the transom. Mm -hmm. Can I just rocket fire at you? I I see. Yes, very, very well. I would be happy to uh, respond to to their inquiries. Oh, very good. Here we go. Let's just go here. And it's it's a kind of a mixed bag, grab bag kind of thing. So we'll just see what we got here. Let me see. I'm going to pull one up here. Okay. This one is... Euro as a brand new bag. <laughs> yes, indeed. Okay. This is from Donna from Ypsilanti. 
Donna asks, is Trump done or can he pull another rabbit out of his hat? It is a little known fact, but uh, Trump is quite an expert at losing. Uh, as much like his uh, vodka fueled airlines, the gambling stake project, he will both find a way to lose and a way to convince himself and his followers that it's somehow a win or a part of a grand plan. In a world of people that trip on cracks, he's the one that pretends that tripping is part of an elaborate dance move that he choreographed or planned all along, even when everyone was watching and knows he tripped. He'll be the ex-president that brags about how he scammed the government. Oh, man. Oh, man, that's... that's I. Can't disagree at all with that, Euro. And Donna, I hope that answers your question. All right, next question here. Yeah, now, this is for Steve from Tulsa. Speaking of Trump. Euro, do you think he's trying to find some last-minute dirt on Biden? I guess he means Trump, of course. Uh, what about that plagiarism scandal? Oh, Biden's plagiarism. Before the Trump campaign can start casting stones, they need to release a copy of that Hitler speeches book that Trump used to keep on his nightstand. <laughs> I'm sure he lifted a few ideas from that thing. Oh, very good. Very good. All right. Our next question. This is from Michelle from Long Beach. And she says, regarding COVID mask deniers, why, how, and should we make fun of them when they're on the waiting list for a ventilator? I know that summers in the South can be scorchers. So FEMA is sending refrigerated morgue trucks to help them cool off. <laughs> no, no re really, Alex, it's difficult to make fun of this poor group. You know, there's an old saying in comedy that you should never punch down, only punch up, you know. And it's so confusing. On, on the one hand, you have scientists and doctors, epidemiologists saying that you should wear a mask. And then on the other hand, you have evangelical pastors, southern governors, and that guy you went to high school with that put crib notes in a sucrets box and coughed his way through sophomore biology class who is now convinced that masks are some slippery slope to Sharia law because it's getting everyone used to wearing face coverings and Bill Gates and the Bilderbergs are going to hide some sort of antichrist 5G global tracking and mind control device in the vaccine. Who to believe, you know, it's such a toss up. The funny thing is that they make fun of all the kids who received participation trophies growing up, but, they're the ultimate participation trophy winners, you know? <laughs> well, how so? You know, they believe their 30 minutes of watching conspiracy theorists on YouTube makes them as big a winner as someone who spent a lifetime studying medicine and science. I'm still waiting for my Olympic gold medal for watching Michael Phelps swimming. Aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. It's that Dunning Kruger effect thing. That's what that is. Um, okay, I have another question here. Oh, okay. This is this That's is... not Freddy Krueger. No. No, it's not Freddy Krueger. That's his brother Dunning. <laughs> <laughs> this this question is uh from Jamie of Prairie Village, Kansas. Here we go. Oh, this is about oh, this is about football. NFL. Will it be back, and how do you think it'll go? This one is very near and dear to my heart, as I know it is you, my friend. I, I think the NFL is really close to being ready with a few minor uniform changes. You know, most team members are already wearing the face shields. If they can make them mandatory for all players and then extend it down, connect it with their shoulder pads. Oh, wait, wait, wouldn't that make it hard to breathe? Yes. So that is where the NASA oxygen tank and air filtration system comes in. Uh, okay. Well, I'm sorry, you're up. Sorry, but won't that be hideously expensive and slow the game down? Yes, you are right. Then I'm guessing a large number of players would catch COVID. They'll put the NASA filtration system in the owner's suites at the stadiums. Uh. Some players may get sick and die, but I'm sure it's a risk that the owners and fans in Las Vegas are willing to take. Oh, sadly, I think you're right. Okay, next one here. Oh, this is from Joni in Davenport, Iowa. Joni asks, 
What are your COVID ain't going away stock picks? You know, this is a good one. With everyone cooking at home and the popularity of spicy flavors and ethnic Latin cuisine, I was going to recommend Goya. But that pick went from verde to rojo very quickly. Who would have guessed that Trump's one Hispanic supporter owned a huge food manufacturing conglomerate? Okay. Well, you know, speaking of uh, food, food, we got this question. This is, oh, wow, this is kind of rando. Okay, this one here. This is from Mike in Oklahoma City. Uh, you're a Satan. Taco Bell has a grilled cheese burrito. Discuss. Isn't that just a rebranded cheese I mean, most importantly, is it still on the 59 79 99 menu? And what happened to the little Chihuahua dog? That is, that's the more important question at Taco Bell. Is there a special prize if you find a little piece of dog collar in your crunch wrap supreme? So many questions. Okay. Okay. We're getting close here. We got a few more in the mailbag. Do you have time for another couple? Yes. Yes, please. Continue. Okay. All right. All right. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay. This is from Carolyn in Orlando. Okay, Carolyn. Mitch McConnell wants to cut or end COVID subsidies because he thinks it's a disincentive? You know, that's funny how that works. You know, if you are an unemployed restaurant worker, a little extra money is a disincentive. But if you're a big donor or connected to the administration, it's much needed support for our job creators. You know, they, they call it PPP, but it should just be PP because it's this trickle-down economics once again, you know, my friend. But in my many years of existence, and I've existed many, many years, I've realized that things don't trickle down much when you have that many wealthy, swollen prostates in, in charge of the flow. Uh, uh, Douglas in Aberdeen writes, what's the most surprising thing you've seen in 2020? Uh, simple answer, how, how easily people are fooled. <sighs> Only once. All right, here's another one. Uh, we're moving right along here. Oh, okay, this is more of like a statement, I guess. And well, it's a question, it's just kind of a statement form. This, uh, this is from Timothy in uh, Ball, uh, he, he's at Ball State. I guess he's a student at Ball State. Is that in Indiana, I think? Uh, yeah, all right. Yes, indeed. Yes, all right. There's a joke in there somewhere. All right. Supreme Court of the United States will rule on ACA again. I have said it before, my friend, and I will say it again. They call me the evil one. It's a little warm at the office, but I give you medical, dental. I give you vision. I even throw in the accidental death and dismemberment. Frankly, a bit surprising how often I have to pay out on that one, but. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, uh, actually, here's, this is, this is one for me. Supreme, speaking of the Supreme Court, that just reminded me of this question. Trump's tax returns, you think they'll be eventually when we get to see them, any big surprises? Uh, you know, that little piece of tape that's always on the back of his extra long, pathetic red ties. He writes that off as a business expense. It's uh, office supplies. Amazing how much he goes through. Uh, and a little known fact that will be revealed, he does send 10% of his income to a local church. Unfortunately, it is a church's chicken franchise. Um, okay, this is our last question. And uh, okay, this one is from Scott in San Francisco. What's in Melania's renegotiated prenup? You know, uh, one thing is the, uh, some reading glasses. She's like squinting all the time. It's like, I can't tell if she's angry, if she smelled a fart, I'm not sure. Uh, I think she also gets a lifetime supply of my pillows and uh, maybe an autographed picture of Chuck Woolery and Chachi from Johnny Loves Chachi. That's Scott Bayo. He's quite the heartthrob. 
Oh my gosh, Hero! <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, well, before you go, what do you what do you what are you off to do now? What's going on? Well, I there is another Supreme Court ruling related to public funding for private uh, religious schools. So, so I'm going to open a Satanist high school in Montana. You know, when why let the Christians get all of that uh, great school voucher cheddar? And frankly, I've produced far more scholars anyway. You know, if Betsy DeVos is the poster child for high achievement in a private school, I could pop out Mensa members like a Pez dispenser in comparison. Hmm. Good. Well, okay. I, I hope you'll say yes. Any chance you'll join us again before the election? Absolutely, my friend. We have less than 100 days to the election and a lot, a lot would be going on. So I would be absolutely thrilled to come back and see you, my friend. Oh, great, fantastic. Well, thanks again to Eurosatan to, for sharing the iniquitous invective only you can conjure. It is my pleasure, Alex. Oh, that Eurosatan. He is definitely... One from the depths, I guess you could say. He's got a lot of hot takes. I guess you could say that too. <laughs> All right, I'll stop with the uh, devil puns. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed the whole season, season five. Season six is coming your way in September 2020. I really want you to be a part of it. Please don't forget, I could use your help. If you want to support the show, sponsor the show, if you want to give a review, if you want to buy a book, all those things, all the information I talked to you about, it's on mgopod.com, easy to find in the show notes. Just go there, please. And if you if you want to help, don't wait. Don't sleep on it. Let me know now when you're listening. As soon as this episode's over, go to the, the site and use the contact form and let me know what you're interested in, and I'll get with you. Okay, I'll quit giving you the hard sell. you got to admit, I don't do this the whole season. I don't give you the hard sell all season. In fact, I, I try very hard not to. I just give you the show, and I give you, uh, I think, an entertaining and, and hopefully thought-provoking 45 minutes to an hour, and I move on. But uh, So that's what season finales are for. So sign up at mgopod.com, subscribe, so you'll know when the next episode's coming out, or subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts do that and then do those review things I was talking about and then uh, you'll know when we're back in September I'm going to go now because as I said I'm exhausted and I'm already tired of talking I've been talking for a long time straight and you're like yes Alex we know please stop talking and I will do that for the next few weeks and until next time keep reading as the world begins to spin again and travel plans get back onto calendars what felt normal before now feels different. Which is why when you fly, there's only one choice that offers the safest, easiest way to park. Newark Liberty International Airport. Now when you pre-book, you'll experience parking that's simple, seamless, and contact-free. Upon entry and exit, your license plate will be scanned and the gate will automatically raise. Plus, you'll always save money when you pre-book online. So book now at newarkairport.com slash parking. With the new iPhone SE for less than 100 bucks at Metro, you rule. It's the most affordable iPhone on the number one brand in prepaid. So whether you're studying online or FaceTiming. Hey, Mom. Hi, dear. The iPhone SE has all you need. Switch to Metro and get the iPhone SE for $99.99 after rebate redemption and six months of service with AutoPay. Metro by T-Mobile. Rule your day. Limit one per account slash household. Requires port and ID validation. Not valid for numbers currently on the T-Mobile network or active on Metro in past 90 days. Restrictions apply. See store for details.